Well, 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 here's Mama Bloom's brood. gay air of festive expectancy pervades the Bloom home, for in a few days, Sarah Bloom will become Mrs. Sidney Schiffbane. Sarah's younger sister, Yutta, is in the living room with Mama as the doorbell rings. Answer the doorbell, Yetta, but don't unwrap anything. Yetta, did you hear me tell you to answer the door? I'll answer it. Answer it before it goes away. It won't go away, don't worry. Don't roller, I'm answering it. Take it for Mr. and Mrs. Sidney Schiffbane. I'll take it. Fanny, it's just... Okay. Yetta, give him a dime. Well, where do I find one? In the blue vase on the mantel place. Mantel piece, Ma. Buy piece. We bought the whole thing. Uh, here you are. Thanks, sister. Shall I open it? Nobody opens anything but me. I'm the opening up department. And besides, every time you open up a package, you get the whole room full of eczema. Oh, you mean excelsior, Ma. I mean hay. Honest, we got so much hay, we could open up a delivery stable. Listen, Ma, if you're not sure of a word, why do you use it? It's not delivery stable, it's livery stable. And why don't you use only the words you know? Sometimes you embarrass me terribly. Yet, uh, how can what I do embarrass you? Aren't you old enough to know that the only way you can be ashamed is to do something yourself that's wrong? What I do is my business. I know, Ma, but you're always using a word in the wrong place. Let's quit talking about voids and open up the present. Honest, we're terrible. In a few days, your sister's going to be married. Presents come again, fast and infuriated. And we are wasting time talking about voids. Let's leave the voids go till after the wedding. They'll still be there. Oh, I'll cut the string. Whatever you do, don't do what you did yesterday. What did I do yesterday? You cut the string that Papa's razor. Oh, I didn't hurt it any. You didn't help it any. Well, where's the scissors then? In the sling basket. Be careful, they're very sharp. Okay. Look, yet the cut right here. <laughs> Ain't that elegant string? I'll bet it's our felt present. Who do you think it's from? Well, let's open it and find out. Yeah. H-A-L-L. Hall and Company. L-T-D. What means L-T-D? Means limited. Oh, the poor company. Why, they're limited. Oh, that doesn't mean anything. That means incorporated. Uh Uh-huh. You see, even they make mistakes in voice. No, it's just another expression for incorporated. A synonym. Spices. Who sends spices for presents? Who said anything about spices? You did, Yetta. You said they were in the cinnamon business. Oh, let's open the present, Ma. Now what? I wonder who it's from. You think, Mrs. Fink? It's heavy. She always said something big, so it'll show. Oh, open it up, for goodness sake. Can't I have a little pleasure? But I think you'd get more pleasure opening it up and looking at it instead of looking at the box. My child, no present is ever as nice after you open it as before you open it. No matter how elegant it is, still before you look at it, you always imagine something eleganter. There's no such word as eleganter. Then how do you say if one thing is elegant and the next thing is still eleganter? You say more elegant. Uh-huh. You got to use two, mo- two words, huh? Sure. I'll bet that's the telegraph company put that up. They want to get two cents more. For the love of Mike, Ma, open the box. All right, all right, yes, I'll be careful. Uh, put away the hay, huh? Oh, <gasps> isn't that beautiful? Oh, gee. I tell you, that's simply beautiful. What is it? Why, it's a cocktail shaker. Solid silver? Yeah. Show me the macchietta. Here it is, sterling. Oh, it's very elegant. That's the cut. Oh, it must be inside. How do you get inside? Well, you take off the top. It sticks. Well, pull it harder. I don't want to break it. It's so elegant. 
Highness, the presents get more beautiful and more beautiful. Oh, give it to me. I'll take the top off. Here, yeah, but be very careful. Don't scratch it either. They might want to exchange it. Oh, they won't want to exchange this. It's the most useful present up to now. There's nothing like a good old cocktail shaker. You know, Ma, there's only two things a housewife needs today. A cocktail shaker and a can opener. Stop making speeches and give me the cut. Oh, here it is. Hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Montmorency Goldfarb. <laughs> Mo Goldfarb. That's a nice present for the Goldfarbs. Yeah. I expected from them maybe a salt and pepper shaker at the most. Uh-huh, I know. <laughs> He's gone in the button business and he wants to sell Papa. Uh, I tell you, <laughs> that fellow's a go-catcher. I'm surprised he didn't put samples in the price list inside. Well, everybody's sending nice presents. Yeah. Our relatives sent nicer presents than Sydney's relatives. Absolutely. But Sydney's got more relatives, so that makes it even stiff. Well, shall I put it back in the box? Yeah. But you don't have to put the hay in. Put everything back in the right box and don't make any mistakes. Well, now, why do I have to be so careful about that? Unless you got it in the right box, how do they know where to take it back? Yeah, but I told you that they won't take this back. I know, but some of the presents they got to take back. So far, the presents aren't half in, and already they could use a different salt and pepper shaker for each meal for three weeks and still have enough. Oh, Ma, aren't you supposed to have a fitting today? Yeah, three o'clock, but I don't like the dress. Well, then what are you having it made for? Sarah drove me crazy. Oh, I think it's a beautiful dress. It's too fancy. Well, you have to have a fancy dress for a wedding. You don't have to have it so fancy. I wish it had sleeves. I feel like a modest. Well, you can't have sleeves in an evening gown. Why can't I have sleeves? It's my dress. Well, it's a style. It's a silly style. Well, if it had sleeves, it wouldn't be right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I suppose the wedding wouldn't take if I had sleeves. I suppose if I had sleeves in my dress, the rabbi would say he couldn't marry them because in my dress, there were sleeves. Oh, don't start anything. We're having enough trouble with Papa. Papa's right. Fifty-one years he lived happy without a dress full suit. Now he's got to spend ninety dollars for one. Not a dress full suit, Ma. A full dress. Whatever you call it, it's a silly suit. The coat is cut off on the side. Down the back it's too long. Along the side of the pants is ribbon. He can't even wear it to the office afterwards. Well, he's got to get one. Why can't he wear his tuxedo? He looks cute in that. Now, there's no use arguing, Ma. He's got to have a full dress. He'll get it, but he won't look so good. You know Papa's bow-legged, and with a suit like that, <laughs> makes it voice. Well, he can wear it again when I get married. Yeah, so do I have to go through all this again when you get married? Oh, don't kid me, Ma. You know you're enjoying every minute of it. Well, <laughs> I hope that when you get married, my dress is still in style. One dress without sleeves I can stand, but two of them, that'd be taking advantage of good nature. All right, when I get married, you can wear the same dress. You bet your life I... Say, if you get married, will you have Mrs. Fink to your wedding? Well, considering that I'm not even engaged or running around with anyone that I might marry, I certainly think it's a little early to ask that question. Still, whoever you marry, you would have Mrs. Fink, wouldn't you? I don't know. What's the matter? Are you mad at Mrs. Fink? No, I'm not mad at her. Well, then you'll have her. And if you think I'm going to wear the same dress to both my daughter's weddings and have Mrs. Fink make funny faces... Oh, she wouldn't remember, Ma. Mrs. Fink wouldn't remember, huh? <laughs> If it was 200 years later, and every day in those 200 years, Mrs. Fink had gone to three weddings, still she'd remember a thing like that. I'm surprised that you yet. Aha, uh -huh, another present. Answer it, Dolly. Yeah, we want me to put this away first? Yeah, put away the shake-up, and I'll answer it. Okay. What's the matter, Jay? I forgot my key. I thought you was a present. Presents are coming. Of course, presents are coming. Jake, did you try on the suit? Uh, haven't I got enough troubles without that crazy suit? Ninety dollars it cost, and no sides to the coat. What kind of troubles can you have? A nice business you got. Two lovely daughters. One half of them married off already pretty near. To say nothing of an elegant wife like me. Uh, Becky, don't make jokes. I'm saving mine crying for the wedding. Save your crying for after the wedding. What's going to happen after the wedding? Uh-huh, I know. <laughs> it's coming in bills. <laughs> That's all right. You'll pay them. You don't begrudge your daughter a little money. I just found out they're going on a honeymoon. Of course they're going on a honeymoon, Papa. What kind of a wedding would it be without a honeymoon? That's non-union. Do you know where they're going? Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls, nothing. I wish they were going there. What difference does it make where they're going? It don't make no difference where they're going. It's the coming back. No matter where they go, they got to come back. Even I know that. Wait a minute, Mama. They're going to Europe. Which Europe? How many Europes is there? You mean the one on the boat? Of course, the one on the boat. You mean the Europe Charlie Lindbaum flew to? It's a Lindbergh, Ma. Yeah, they're going there. What difference does it make to you where they go? Nobody's asking you to go with them. A honeymoon is a private affair, not an excursion train. But who's going to run the business while well, Sydney's gone? What business? What business? The uniform business. You'll run a trick, don't worry. I? I don't even know the names of some of the machines. Hi, why do you have to know the names of some of the machines? Why, are you taking them out to lunch? Uh, uh, Mommy, you're talking like a fool now. Yeah, I suppose you're talking sensitive. 
You come home worried like something happened because you don't know which machine is called Isidore and which machine is called Geraldine. Uh, Call them anything. Make up names. They're your machines. Who's to stop you? Becky, before I get a worse headache than I've got, let me explain Go to you. Go ahead and explain. I wouldn't understand you anyhow. If Sydney goes to Europe, the least he can be gone is four weeks. Meanwhile, we've got orders. Big orders to fill, and I don't know how to fill them. Can't he show you? In one week, he can show me. It's very difficult. Uh, no, I understand you. mean you can't teach a new trick, old dog? If he goes to Europe, I'll go crazy. Tell him not to go then, Jay. If I told Sydney not to go, even if he wasn't going, he would go. Well, don't worry, darling. Maybe he ain't going. But I heard him with his own face tell a customer. If he goes to Europe, he'll get more business. Every lining has a silver cloth. I tell you, if he goes, we'll lose the business we've got. And if I tell him not to go, he'll sure go. And if I don't tell him, he won't know I don't want him to go, so he'll go. Why does he have to go to Europe? Why don't we go to Paris? That's nice, too. Paris is in Europe, Ma. Since when? I thought it was in France. Paris is in France, and France is in Europe. Don't holler at me. I didn't do it. Some king did it. Hey, quit talking about kings. What are we going to do? Papa, wait till Sydney gets here. Never cross your bridges until your chickens is head. I'm not worried about chickens. I'm worried about the uniforms. There is Sydney. He'll tell us. Oh, here he is. He's getting out of the car right now. Look at him. Look at him. He's standing there laughing. What's he got to cry about? He's going to your thing. Let him in quick, Yetta, like he was a present. Bye. <laughs> Hello, folks. Where's Sally? She'll be right here. Uh, tell me, Sydney, where are you going after the wedding? Well, we're going to rent the car and take a little motor trip. To Europe? You can't go to Europe in an automobile, Ma. Mm -hmm. Sydney could. See, I'd like to go to Europe if I had the time, but I figure four days is all I can afford to stay away. Papa, didn't I tell you? I wouldn't mind the expense of going to Europe. Oh, no, no, sure you wouldn't. Uh... Tell me, Sydney. Why did you tell our customer today you were thinking of going to Europe on your honeymoon? Oh, you mean Pascus and Levine of Toronto? Yes, 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 Pascus and Levine of Toronto. <laughs> yeah, well, he was trying to stall me for two weeks on placing that order, so I fooled him. I told him I'd be away for several months, so he signed up. Where's Sally? Sidney, don't worry about Sally. Don't worry about anything. For a boy like you, this world is a solid gold world trimmed in diamonds. Every river for you'll be full of honey, and on every tree will grow steak sandwiches. Catch up. 